Are you repeating the same relationship patterns? Find yourself with the same kind of person over and over again? Are you feeling attacked by this ad? Therapy can help you figure out why. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful and break the cycle. Simon Dawser tries to pay the main bad guy back by throwing him a single chip yep. and saying that's for the buy-in. Now, the buy-in would have been, I imagine, the amount, the entire amount of money it cost you to be involved in that game. So why would that be represented by a single chip? That is a waste of that denomination of chip because maximally <laughs> there could be five of all chips to represent the entire pot. That is a waste of denomination. Right, so far we have four, six, and all. Those are our denominations. <laughs> and Gimmel. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because Eli driving for Uber would have been dangerous. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. I'm furious, Noah. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Go ahead. I, I have a feeling I know why. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I had forgotten that Uber was my backup plan until you introduced our podcast. <laughs> I'm very much, grateful. See how much worse it would have been without you, <laughs> listeners? All right. And also joining us today is the host of Be Reasonable, the co-host of Skeptics with a K and the project director for the Good Thinking Society, Michael Marshall Marsh. Welcome back. Uh, check. Uh, raise. Call. Uh, did I do it right? I feel like I did it right. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. He made poker references, guys. <laughs> so tell us, Heath. What will we be breaking down today? We watched Sons of Thunder, episode four, Time and Chance. It's about poker, as Marsh just alluded to. It's actually the story of God being a poker cheat. Very yeah. literally. That's yep, that's yep. the story. That's the that's moral. What this is about. The story, yep. And Eli, how bad was this episode? Well, if you love the high stakes of movie poker, but you've only played Go Fish because your grandma told you cards of the devil, <laughs> you <laughs> will love this movie. This is a boob feels like a bag of sand, the poker movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. And, and so, Marsh, this is such an appropriate question given the episode that we just watched. Mm. How American was this episode? <laughs> All right. Well, we've got uh, Harley Davidson. Yep. We've got a biker gang. Mm -hmm. We've got a country music soundtrack. We do. And we've got a waitress putting up with sexual harassment because she relies entirely on her tips to make rent. <laughs> so I think we're just like a bald eagle burger away from peak American. <laughs> <in this. laughs> That definitely exists somewhere. Absolutely. No question. I, I think you mean fried bald eagle burger on a stick. But yes, that is the answer we were looking for. All right. So uh, now, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst poker. Oh best my worst God. Game of poker. Oh, Holy damn it. Shit. What the fuck was happening? <laughs> it's like they made this episode to trigger Heath and no other reason. I was furious throughout this. They actually play out a bunch of poker it's, it's insanity. Nonsense. It's mm. just insanity. If you were trying to get national security information out of Heath, this episode... <laughs> This would work better than an eye torch. Yes. I'm just so much better. Even just the position of people at the table, all of it, everything about it, we're going to get to it. We're Not a single it. thing makes sense. <laughs> yeah. okay. Zero. Well, well uh, as, an, as an adjunct to that, I'm going to go best worst understanding of value because sure. these poker chips that they're using, they randomly fluctuate in value. Sometimes it's worth a one, sometimes it's worth 10. 10 yep. what? We don't know. Nope. We never nope. find out. There's no units. <laughs> There's no units. Also, the stakes of the game, wildly inconsistent. Sometimes his bike is either worth nothing or it's comparable to a house in a big city and we can never find out what's <laughs> meant to be. <laughs> God, it's like they're playing poker with the gold coins from John Wick. Right. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they're not playing a tournament. So like, no, you could just have unit, no unit chips for a tournament, but they're playing a cash game. It right. has to, it they has to dollars. They it talk has to about dollars. cashing out at various points. It, it, everything's insanity. And I was going to go with best worst shuffling. Oh, all right. Yeah. So as much as all the fucking up poker was, you know, triggering Heath, I'm sure that the 
terrible card work was triggering Eli. <laughs> My <laughs> God. At one point, okay, one of the players actually shuffles cards face up. And he is not the example I'm talking about. No, yeah, yeah. He is by far the most nimble shuffler yep. in the movie. <laughs> there is there is a shuffle in this movie so horrifying. I gasped loud enough that my wife came in from the kitchen and said, "Are you okay?" <laughs> <laughs> This was my saw. <laughs> and I'm going to go with a pretty popular one because we've had some bad twists, but I was going to go with best worst twist. Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it mm -mm. doesn't matter. <laughs> but he might as well be in the midst of the end credits of this episode and turn around <laughs> and be like, by the way, I've been Batman the entire time. <laughs> that is the level of shit <laughs> that this twist is. Mm. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I got to be honest with you. I wasn't on episode three, of course. I had forgotten about the whole meaningless flashback thing that Sons of Thunder is so famous for. So I need a minute to prepare myself for that once more. But we'll be back in a flash with all the ham-fisted nonsense that is Sons of Thunder episode four. Hey, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm No Illusions. You know, here on God Awful Movies, we like to try to keep in mind that each new episode could be somebody's first introduction to our show. So when we can, we try to keep the inside jokes to a minimum. Well, no and Heath. Did. Well, exactly. And that's why it's so important that you understand on this week's poker themed episode of God Awful Movies that the only time that we've ever played poker together, the entire cast, we watched Heath, who used to play poker for a living, get his shit wrecked by a Japanese teenager okay. who had never played it, poker before. He had before. totally played before. He had played before poker, very obviously. Yes, podcast listener, the year was 2016. I was about to be wed, and those nearest and dearest to me had gathered for a bachelor party of food, games, and of course, probably poker. Professional in Japan. And on like that, that glorious point, night, perhaps no gift was more unexpected than watching a literal child sweep away each of Heath's chips, even though the very rules of the game had to be explained to him grown up. that night. He was sharking it. I'm telling you, that's why that's why he left. He was clear there was he knew what was happening. I mean, that he was, went back to Japan for he, college. That's so not, he was, as you that's, enjoy this week's episode, keep in mind that you, too, could probably defeat Heath at poker, even if you constantly need Google Translate to explain what was happening that's in the game. Allegedly, allegedly needed Google Translate. That was a part of the show. I'm sure he was doing that. Enjoy the show. That was part of the thing show if you're listening rematch name the place i know you can hear me i know you understand everything i'm saying right now you do not need google translate he doesn't listen rematch. he's in college he's in college in japan okay poker college probably hey hey eli heath you're back early this is still a get ahead episode yeah, we both got off vacation a little early. Well, I got to tell you guys, I thought I was going to run out of stuff doing all these ads while you were gone. I bet. Well, we're here to help. What's the ad? Uh, Tushy. Oh, those guys make amazing bidets. Yeah, they really do. They, they sent us one to try and it has completely changed my bathroom game. Oh, me too. So what's the prompt from the copy that they sent us? Oh, let's see. Tushy, the modern bidet company, washes away even the messiest of poops, leaving you with a better clean than toilet paper. Discuss your worst poop experience and how Tushy um, could have helped. That's that's exactly what they asked for in the copy? I mean, I literally, yes. Oh, don't worry, guys. I got this one. Hey, it's Noah. This was a really long story, so let's just let that beat play the whole time. Just, uh, just chime in in here. Trust me. Uh, you're really glad I beeped this part. So yeah, if I had had a tushy, there would be another Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I'm not using any of that. Yeah, pretty sure that violates several NDAs. But hey, Tushy has a full product line to help make the restroom the best room, including the Tushy Ottoman, the sleekest toilet stool designed to help you poop at 100%, 100% of the time. And the Tushy Brush, the only toilet brush with disposable scrubbing pads so you can use a clean brush every time. Okay, that sounds great. It is. Start washing with a Tushy bidet for a better clean. Go to hellotushy.com slash awful to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off. After you buy and install your Tushy, show it off. Tag us and at Hello Tushy on Instagram. I actually use Instagram for family stuff, so please don't. It's in the must read. I feel like tag us in pictures of you using a bidet shouldn't get to be in the must reads for our ads. It, it is, though. Okay, tag Heath. Hello, Tushy. Tag Heath and pictures of you using a bidet. Great. 
Yeah. I actually do like that. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on our hero, Simon, just punishing the suspension on his Harley <laughs> as he pulls over to help a stranded driver. He is a giant. He's enormous, just to remind everybody. And it oh. looks so silly on this. But he looks like a circus act, like a giant riding a tiny bike. Yep. That's what we're looking yeah. at. I will never get over how silly his lawn gnome beard looks blowing in the wind <laughs> as he rides his motorcycle. So I point out, this is my first experience of any of this. So first mm -hmm. off, I'll point out, this is the first time I've logged into Pure Flix. I noticed that this episode is rated 3.7 out of Four stars, which is yes. a weird number of stars. <laughs> well, because only God gets all five stars, Mark. Right. Yep. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And when David A.R. White's nephew was making this website for him, he was like, okay, what if I only need four stars per episode? Can you knock 20 bucks off then? All right. <laughs> it's either that or it's like, should we should we go up to five stars? Mm, I feel like the fifth star probably isn't required. I, yeah, let's, let's be like, realistic we'll, about we'll our cross content that bridge here, when we come to it. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, so we, as you say, we see him drive up on Harley Davidson and, and uh, I don't see a lot of Harley Davidsons. They always seem a bit silly to me because the riders kind of look like they're the, the child who's been let to the adult's table right. and they've got to kind of like reach really high up to get to it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So they're not, all, Harleys aren't all low riders like this, but yeah, he's on the low rider and it mm. is goddamn amazing. Yeah. Anything this actor is on is a low rider. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he pulls over to the side of the road. There's a driver that's got his hood up, and he's like, hey, you know, I'm having some car troubles. Uh, don't look at what I'm holding behind my back. Just look under the hood. Would you <laughs> help me? So very clearly a bad guy. So yeah. obvious. Mm -hmm. Like, first of all, if you just finished up your last Christian nomad thing as Simon, the next thing that happens is a bad guy. That's yeah, all right. the pattern. That's just a pattern. pattern. Yeah, by now you should know this. Oh, so you think between the last episode and this, he's just been driving down the road constantly paranoid about anything he sees being the <laughs> yeah. next potential bad guy. No, <laughs> but he should have been. Yes. He should have been. We know his pattern by <laughs> now. Insufficiently This is how it happens yeah. every time. A box and a stick with a Bible under it would have been a better <laughs> setup for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah so he pulls over the guy's like i don't know much about car oh don't mind my enormous friend sitting in the passenger seat there he's just uh he's just looking at a crossword or something <laughs> it's really weird that we refer to him and we never see who that person is at no point in the rest of the episode do we even meet him nope nope yeah, because, right, he's not necessary here because the little dude that gets him to pull over knocks him out with his giant comically large wrench yeah, I can only assume he was referring to the cameraman and that the actor playing Simon forgot that he was being filmed. And so the other guy just improvised, like, you know, don't, don't look at the cameraman. Come on, man, we've done a few of these now. So, yeah, so he knocks him out. There's this video game level ding when he hits him with the wrench. <laughs> they almost knocked my ass out, too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, you if you want to fix this episode, Simon has terrible, terrible head trauma for the rest of it. <laughs> right? He's at the poker table. They're like, what do you say, stranger? And he's like, I make a poopy. <laughs> oh, right. I hit you with a wrench. It's not Sorry. that far from what Eli just said. Yeah, it, yeah. it's pretty It's pretty accurate. Yeah. Actually, yeah. That would explain an awful lot of the poker words. It's that like, I, said I that. made a poopy plus a Bible quote. It's really close <laughs> yeah. to what Eli said. But this is also meant to be very clearly helping someone stricken on the side of the road, Good Samaritan thing, except he then gets hit on the top of the head, which is like, yeah, the Good Samaritan was an idiot. That's the yeah, only right. moral can take from this. Don't fuck around with it. Yeah, but they steal his bike. So sometime later, he wakes up and he starts hoofing it down the road and a pickup pulls over to see if he needs help. This is where we're going to meet Jesse. As, as he walks down the road, he could not more clearly have shit himself while he was unconscious. I mean, it is really obvious. <laughs> okay, do people just pull over to chat with you as a rule in the South yeah. if you're just walking down the street like that? Okay, well, so this is the thing. Jesse is obviously cruising for some gay sex and has the worst luck ever in running into <laughs> Simon, right? I don't know. I mean, you're trying to pick up a random hitchhiker, get a street blowjob before you go to a poker game and try and win your dad's farm back, and he starts talking about Jesus? That's the worst. Right. Mm. I bet Simon's got a good sense of cock for a blowjob. So, I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and then we, we were reminded. So I wasn't on the last one where we did this. So I forgot just how bad, A, how bad the writing was, but B, how inconsistent the delivery of that writing was. So here's the actual line. Jesse's like, you know, hey, what happened? 
And Simon says, well, I stopped to help someone. I got my bike stolen in the return. <laughs> the, the line is, in, like, I looked at the, I had to rewind this several times and check the closed captioning. The line is, I got my bike stolen in return. But he says, in the return, which sounds like, by the way, when you first hear it, and then returned. So it was like, I was baffled by this. But no, they don't go back for things in this movie. I went to speak to a manager and tried to return my bike, and he just fucking stole it. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> One take. It makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, and by the way, speaking of the closed captioning, uh, spoilers, this will not be the first time the closed captioning tries to help us out with this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, constantly, constantly throughout. And what I love is Jesse's response to that is, oh, stopping to help someone, that was your first mistake. Yeah. Says the guy stopping to help someone. That's what you've, <laughs> right. you've just introduced yourself exactly that way. Right. Well, I was hoping Jesse would just like steal his shoe or something. <laughs> 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 drive away. What I want is for him to, to, to knock Jesse out and steal his car next. And it just yeah. be a constant series of people <laughs> knocking goes, people out in order to steal their vehicle. <laughs> Knocks out some kid and takes his tricycle. Yeah, right. No, just keep going like that. That'd be fun. <laughs> he steals Jesse's truck, but then he pulls over to help a different guy and the truck gets stolen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole way down. Oh, all right. Him and Jesse are walking together. They usually inch their way down the road into town. <laughs> Bull me thrice. Shame on. Definitely me at that point, I guess. Thrice. <laughs> well, and then, okay, so then Simon gets in the truck and he's just like, well, I appreciate it. But the fucking editor left out the part where Jesse invited him into the truck or said he would give him a <laughs> ride. So that's just implied, I guess. So he gets in the truck to get a ride and he goes, you know, Jesus. Uh, wanted so badly for Jesse to be like, Please get out of the car. <laughs> like, genu Look, here's the thing. If I pulled over to help someone and they asked me that, I would still help them, but I would absolutely start establishing car rules that they weren't allowed to talk about Jesus. I'd be like, up, 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 up. child safety locks. I don't want to know about your Lord and Savior or anything that comes out of your body. How's that? I just I just wanted to cut to Jesse's face and him like, oh God, it's happening again. No. Oh, I'll God. turn this car around right now. <laughs> oh yeah. God but, damn but it. Jesse's I... like Jesse's he says, you know Jesus? And Jesse's like, Yeah, it's a normal question. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, he's the guy from that snuff novel. I go to church, I know about Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and Simon's like, Well, I'm a giant who is nomadic and shares the gospel. <laughs> but now he says, Yeah, yeah, I go to church, I know Jesus. Why do you ask? And Simon's answer to that is nothing. Just literally does not answer. Just take another side. No, no my, reason. My cool. character <laughs> asks that a lot. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, he's doing you a favor, dude. You got charity preaching backwards, right? <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> <laughs> this works at all. So, yeah, but so Jesse drops him off at a, at a motel. He will never check into this motel. There's never going to be a reason why he <laughs> takes him to a motel. And Jesse's like, well, you know, I'd love to help you find your bike, but well, we're trying to fill 35 minutes with this uh, plot, so it's going to have to wait. I'll I'll run into you later on down the plot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, he's like, I'd like to help you, but you know, I've 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 got something else to do, which is 100 percent how I'd respond to this guy. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll get at the nearest cheap motel I could find. Sorry, I can't take you any further. I've got things to do. Do you have time to record an episode of a podcast? No, you know, no, you know what? I've got things to do. I've got things to do. <laughs> and that's when Simon is like, "All right, well." God bless you. And there's a giant pause at this point. Simon's like, I said, God bless you. Eye contact. Please. Okay. Okay. That's it. I love God spending time with God. Oh, the giant, but that's my new response to God bless you from now on. Just giant, hard eye contact pause. <laughs> till, till they give up on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I still like to just pretend it burns, right? Every time someone does oh, it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> By the way, Simon, just in case anybody doesn't remember all those other episodes, his thing is he's just a nomadic odd job guy who goes around Texas on a bike and finds odd jobs. I want to see him go to New York and see how he does there. Just being like, <laughs> yeah. hey, can I do odd uh, jobs and live with you? Uh, go fuck myself. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Everybody <laughs> says go fuck yourself. It is weird that he's been driving around for four episodes and hasn't gotten out of Texas yet. I mean, I've driven around Texas before. I get it, but still. <laughs> All right. So, and then we do one of these weird ass Sons of Thunder flashbacks. Now, the flashbacks in this show are like, unlike anything else because they're too small of snippets to actually give us any context or mean anything <laughs> but also we get into them with the sort of graphics that most shows would use for 
epileptic seizure or the <laughs> demon has walked out of the rift. You know, something <laughs> like that. Especially when he's just he's just had head trauma. The first time <laughs> right. it happened, I was like, okay, I'm not sure what's happening. Has he has he blacked out? Is he just coming to? Right. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> but no, we're flashing back to back when he was before he was Christian. Remember, he was part of a evil atheist biker gang. So he's sitting there at a bar. Yeah. Like an atheist would. <laughs> like an asshole. He's he asked oh, the bartender, yeah. let me get another round of water. She's like, ugh, fuck. All right. Dude, you've been sitting here forever. You're the worst. You want your water straight you're up? You're really the worst. You're, you're super popular uh, with bartenders when you just order oh, rounds yeah. of water the over water. a period of time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so he's sitting there having himself a water, and then the, the gang all come in talking about what a badass Bob the Champ is. What? Okay, what is he the champ of? Right. Uh, gang. Uh, gang. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. I, it's very clear that they've just thought, yeah, we'll just improvise some gang talk and we'll just do it in the moment. And it's like, yeah, this, yeah, Bob, he's he's just done a fight. You're the champ of fi fighting, Bob. Fight, but Bob, you fought. Remember, Bob, Bob, <laughs> what help he fight. Goes, come on, help me. He goes, the champ is Bob, who needs a better name. And it's because that's like, well, that's because you just said it 11 times in your yeah, stupid like, little improv. Also, Bob's like, really? I need a better name. Name your name's Ringo and that's Dozer. I just want to be clear <laughs> on who needs better names. Your your real name is Maverick Von Hogg in real life. The actor, you're Maverick spelled wrong Von Hogg. Just to be clear, and Hogg spelled wrong too. But he's he's, he's saying, oh yeah, but Bob needs a better name. It's like, are we having the script meeting on screen? Because normally you do that off screen. But like, let's let's not go with Bob. Let's come up with something better than Bob. Yeah. By the way, I'm kind of mad that I know Maverick Von Hogg's real name so well. Like, I don't like the things that I know now and get excited about now. I was like mad <laughs> after I got excited about that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it's always a traumatic moment when you revisit the world of Christian cinema and you're like, oh my gosh, it's the guy from The Champ. And he was also an extra in the background of More Than yeah. Movie Month from three years ago. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they also, I want to say this, the badass biker gang members then do a toast to Bob. Yep. And I just really like the idea of super hardcore murderer drug dealers being like, may the road rise up to meet you right quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I love is when they then they have to, I, I guess everybody's getting a, a cut of the winnings, whatever the hell that means. And mm -hmm. they've all got these little, he's got these nice little envelopes to give everybody the the winnings in they're very nice paper stock i think they're padded <laughs> they envelopes. Look, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah they're, they're they're nice. little bubble wrap on the inside they got the bubble yeah, yeah they got rubber bands around it yep. so like maverick von hogg dozer had to go to staples as a meth dealer gang <laughs> biker guy and buy that stuff yeah just very quickly, Maverick Von Hogg is Ringo. Dozer is Simon, the, the main yeah. character. That was his yeah. Yeah. biker name. Everybody who was lost just now. Yeah, in case, correct. well, it's going to matter <laughs> later. And also, this is also where we introduce Diego because everybody gets an, uh, an envelope of cash except Diego. Yeah, because Diego lost the fight. And so he doesn't get paid for having fought Bob is what I can only assume is happening. I guess. Which, <laughs> I don't know why Diego would have taken that deal because Bob is like three feet taller than yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. I can only imagine it's like, well, I'm going to be fighting, but I assume I get paid for the Regardless, fight, not for right? having downed yes. this giant. I think it was like a rock, paper, scissors tournament like in company. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. That would be yeah. interesting. See, when he didn't have the money for Diego, I really wanted him to turn to him and be like, and you set up direct deposit, right, for the backer gang? Oh, okay, yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> What's your routing number? I also really hope that this this meth banker gang have got like a a business account at their local stationery supply. Because the thing is, if you're going to use a lot of those envelopes, <laughs> you don't want to be buying them just off the rack. You want to try oh, and yeah, set yeah. up a deal where you can yeah, get, uh, you know, uh, buy in bulk. It's the only sensible way to do it. <laughs> absolutely. Just Maverick on Von Hogg with, on the phone with Uline. All right, so can I get a one, one, four, three? Shit, ah, the robot interrupted me again. Yeah, it, it's just him with Dwight from The Office. And that, that's the scene that I really want to see in this film. All right, fuck this. I'm calling WB Mason. You guys, your rates are ridiculous at Dunder Mifflin. This is dumb. I'm a meth dealer. And by the way, don't use Uline. They're terrible, terrible fucking people. So, but Dozer, though, he doesn't... Hot take. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Hate Uline. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at look into it. You'll hate him too. No, oh, this okay. makes me so sad. I thought you had like an exit ninety six B thing. No, with no, 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 no. It's it's like Christian like sell it. Ah, you know, oh right, no, yeah, we've talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. knew that in the back of my head. Shit. I'm mad that I knew that now. 
It's insane to me that you have to have that level of uh, consciousness about businesses, religious you really practices. Do yep. We don't have that in the UK. It's not like Staples. Oh, yeah, no, they're super Mormon. You've got to be right, 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 right yeah, exactly. Staples. No, oh, don't go to Chick-fil-A, man. Oh, don't. Yeah, right. There, mm. We have to, you really have to know here. Yeah. You guys don't have theocratic paper companies? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be not. And also, by and large, you pay a living wage or at least a uh, minimum wage. So again, yeah, we, we, we're doing okay in places. Your Big Macs must be so expensive. Um, <laughs> They don't even have a theocratic Church of England. No, that is true. <laughs> it's like, oh, guys, I mean, you, you've got the Jesus thing, but don't go too far with it. That's basically the <laughs> the state religion of yeah, uh, exactly, of the UK. exactly. Like, don't be right. a dick about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking relax the religion. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. All right. So yeah, and by the way, Episcopalians, if you want that, you can use it, right? You can have that. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a great little bumper sticker and everything. So okay. So but but the key here is Dozer Simon. He does not want in on the big money envelope celebrating. He has a date, so he leaves the bar. Now we've spent some time on it because it was hilarious and weird. But that was like an eighteen second thing, right? He's he mm. drinks some water and everybody comes in and goes, "Oh, Bob's the champ." Yeah, he goes, "Not the champ." Are you going to stick around for your envelope of money? Nope. All right, bye. That's the whole goddamn flashback. Let me get one more water. Actually, I'm leaving. Fuck you. <laughs> pour it. Pour it. I want to watch you pour it. It was Gross. an eighteen second scene that you guys all had context for. I right. just saw this 18 second weird, and I thought, has he got concussion from the wrench? Is this like a, 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 an imaginary? Sure I wasn't even that sure. It was the same character. It was that fleeting a scene. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So out, but we come back from the flashback. He's walking around downtown in some shithole little city, and he right. finds his bike. Just to be clear, he just had like a. A 18 second flashback while he was standing in the middle of the street. That's what happened. Yeah, right, in reality. Yeah, he was in the middle of the street. <laughs> he had that weird flashback. Then he woke back up still in the middle of the street. But, like in a different part of town because he's no longer at that motel. So yeah, we have to just imagine he was just wandering around in a stupor during that flashback. <laughs> yeah. I want him to come back out of the flashback, like wiping the drool from his chin. <laughs> <laughs> every, every time it happens in this scene, in this episode. Yeah, but he just stumbles across his bike. I wrote in my note, shit, this episode almost had a plot for a minute there. Glad they took care of that for us. Yeah, yeah that was easy. He just wakes up and sees his bike right there. Yeah, And he <laughs> he gets excited. So he tries to start running to the bike. <laughs> and operative word is tries yeah, to start uh -huh. running. He tries to start running like I try to start dancing. <laughs> it's not pretty. It's, it's, yeah. And running. It's like I, well, yeah, me it's, also it's, trying to start running. Mm -hmm very aspirational in nature yeah once you think about the fact that he was out of it while he was getting there it makes me think that he just thought he's like a homing pigeon that he just stays <laughs> and then slowly gravitates towards his bike and then comes to when he's near it oh uh, simon just curls up inside one of his side bags pops his little beard out <laughs> yeah he gets infused when there's a, a lightning storm occasionally he goes missing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another giant starts spitting a worm into his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I would buy that motivational poster. I'm just saying. <laughs> but a Episcopalian, you can have that too. Actually, we're yeah, very yeah. generous. <laughs> right, but he he finally starts running, and he he gets to the bike, and he looks in the little saddlebag thing, <laughs> and he finds his uh, Hello Kitty lunchbox yep. that he has. And that's where uh, Marsh, just so to catch you up, that's where he keeps his Bible. He has oh. a Hello Kitty lunchboxy thing, and he keeps a Bible inside. That was not clear to me. He just went. Mm -mm. Start, he was rifling through the saddlebags, which, when you look at them from another angle, look like the the, the, the bike is under half a tent. Yeah, I, I was wondering why he's got <laughs> yeah. half a tent on the back of his bike. But this suddenly all starts to make sense. Okay, okay, I'm I'm I'm, I'm caught back up again. I'm right there with you. Right, and then <laughs> and then he walks into the bar. This is parked right outside a bar. And he's like, oh, the, the people who stole my bike probably are right inside this bar. So he goes into so. the big confrontation while holding a Hello Kitty lunchbox, which <laughs> mm -hmm. is just such a fun moment. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. They, confident that they did not pawn his Hello Kitty lunchbox. He goes inside where the guy who stole his bike and a, no a number of other characters are playing glowy poker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's one of those big uh, money cash games of 
four people at a bar in the middle of fucking nowhere, Texas. <laughs> and they spent the extra money to have that strip of neon around the table. Yep. <laughs> to light it up. But but here's the problem with that, okay, just from a lighting perspective. Normally we reserve that sort of weird soft underlighting for like scenes that take place in heaven or in a dream or something <laughs> like that. So the whole time it just sort of subconsciously feels like they're playing poker in the afterlife somewhere, right? Yeah. You've watched way too much Christian stuff, Noah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, any be- kind of underlighting immediately <laughs> makes you think Christian. You you've you need to take a break. You need an intervention. You need people to, to no, ground like, but, you again. But that's literally the, the language of lighting in movies is yeah. that type of lighting is usually reserved for dream sequences and shit like that. <laughs> Not like evil poker games that have no spiritual implication. <laughs> oh, but this has spiritual implications. Well, that's true. Now. That You know what? That's true. So I, mm-hmm. I withdraw it. So yeah, he walks in and he's like, you stole my bike. And he's holding the Hello Kitty lunchbox. And they're all like, this is a weird juxtaposition. Anyway, <laughs> The guy he accuses is like, nope, I bought it six days ago in a specific place. And the sheriff is one of the players of this game, the town sheriff we learn. And the sheriff is like, all right, man, you're making a big accusation there. Do you have the title to the bike? It doesn't count if you don't have the title to the bike in your hand right now. And <laughs> Simon's like, fuck, it's, it's not on me. But he he does not think to himself, all right, maybe I should... Ask if the clearly Steeler guy has the title. No, yeah. they just move on. Yeah, that seems like the obvious thing to do. It's like, oh, you, you'll only accept whose bike this is if they can produce the title. Where's that guy's title? It never crosses Simon no. Doe's mind. He's like, ah, I've never right, the title. Right. Like, I yeah, guess it's wh- his now. Why do the keys have my dog's picture? Like, there are other ways of adjudicating <laughs> yeah. vehicle ownership beyond his word versus mine, and I have the title right here. This show knows that, right? Yeah. Why was my Hello Kitty lunchbox in the pocket right, of Right, yeah, that? exactly, exactly. <laughs> the sheriff might as well turn to him and go, no, no, he called dibs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was here when he had said shot gun earlier about your bicycle yeah, exactly. so yeah sorry man. you have to be in view of the bike all right all right you guys have weird rules here yeah we'll, we'll settle it legally uh ip dip dog shit you are not it. Oh, okay. it's, it's, it's. right but they decide to settle it with poker they're mm. like all right well obviously you know we're at an impasse with the title thing that's how the law works you can join our poker game though and maybe you can win the bike and <laughs> And Simon's like, cool, yeah, that's how poker works. That's how poker works. That You know, the Steeler guy definitely will have to put the bike on the table as a bet at some point in poker. Yeah. I'll make him, and I'll win the bike. And it's like, it's yeah, you can, you can try and win the bike back in a game of poker for which you will put up zero stakes. Will you do it or not? Well, obviously, yes, because it costs me nothing <laughs> to try and get my bike back from this. This is not a st- <laughs> high stakes endeavor at this point. Yeah, they they give him chips. Give he's him like, I don't have any they money. And they're the like, money. all right, here's chips. You're playing now. And he's like, okay. <laughs> I wanted sense. him to cash those chips out immediately for more than the bike was worth. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> jokes on you guys. Well, what's amazing is, and we need to address that because head bad guy, who we're going to learn, like, runs this town, is like, that's a gift. And later on in the episode, right, he is supposed to go, but don't you remember? I gave you your first chip, so blah, blah, blah. Never happens. Nope. Mm-hmm. So he's just like, no, no, I just liked you and I felt bad. <laughs> My right. all your fucking no, we are going to be stacking up unfired Chekhov's guns for this entire episode because nothing ever. Tri- but no, nope, they'd pull the trigger on nothing in this episode. Yeah. And in some ways, we, we somehow managed to unfire guns that didn't previously exist. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go even lower exactly. stakes. I did want this to be a reoccurring pattern, though. Like halfway through the game, someone walks in and they're like, hey, your nephew stole my girl. And they set up some milk cans and give him a baseball. All right. Now, if you can knock down a whole but but the reason he's playing ostensibly anyway is that the their their last guy didn't show up right they they needed they were down another player because apparently this show thinks that you need a particular number of players to can play poker but just then Jesse the character that gave him a ride earlier comes in he was apparently the late player and they have to have the whole nope we already replaced you he already sat in your chair here's what Jesse did Jesse dropped the biker guy off at a motel and then the biker guy walked in a fugue state to (laughs) the poker place faster than Jesse drove there? Well, Jesse... Jesse had to take care of something else. That wasn't a lie. 
Right. Yeah. No. So Jesse actually had to beat someone that was in his vehicle. To beat yeah. Was um, it meet someone that was in his vehicle? No. 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 Exact checked. line. He mm. shows up. They're like, uh, "Sorry, you were late." And he's like, "I had to beat someone that's in my vehicle to be here." That's and they're all like. Yeah, that's a normal <laughs> sentence. All right, we're gonna let you play. Closed captioning was no help. <laughs> so are we are we supposed to assume that he's has he like beaten somebody up and then like put him in the trunk of the car in order to get to this game? <laughs> Is that what we're meant to think has that happened? Would solve it, and that will never come back. No, right? The the, the person he met beat whatever the fuck he did. They will never exist or matter. It's just a reason for him to be 20 minutes late, which will also not matter. No, no it doesn't matter at all. Usually when they fuck up a line this bad, you can tell what was supposed to go there, right? Yeah. But like in this instance, yeah, I was just rewinding it, playing it over again, Googling this phrase to see if it had some <laughs> weird meaning to Christians that we don't know about. But nope. <laughs> Nope, those were just words. Even the closed captioner couldn't figure out what was meant to have been this line on the official closed captions of this yep. episode. CC guy had no fucking idea what was <laughs> happening throughout this. No. It might as well have been the closed caption was just that shrugging emoji. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're on your own, guys. Well, and I should also point out that this is about the time in the episode where we start fucking up the poker, which is weird because they haven't started playing the poker. <laughs> yeah. mm, but they have, okay. <laughs> Okay. Mm, mm. So, mm. so before we get into poker, there's there's a thing that happens before we start playing poker, which is even still fucking up the poker. Which is just before Jesse gets there, the nephew, the guy of the the, the nephew, the bad guy, who's the one who put a wrench to Simon Dulles' head, gives the waitress who's given him a drink a tip, and that tip is one of the poker chips. And I think this is important because they're not in a casino; they're nope. in that waitress's bar. So at the end of the day, is she just going to like cash that chip back in? I don't. She has to wait until the end of the whole cash game and get her $1 yeah. out of the yeah. pot. Yes. It, it turns out, it's well, we, we can't say for certain it's $1 because this yeah. film, oh, it this might be like $20,000 by the end of this yeah. they move. But she's just going to find whoever who won and said, uh, I've got this chip. Could you, could you, could you spot me? Could you figure this out? <laughs> it makes <Yeah>. sense. <laughs> so yeah, they finally sit down to play. This is the current state of the poker game. Apparently, they're <laughs> in a hand. Yep. Three mm. people already have a hand already. Mm -hmm. One guy already made a really big bet. Obviously. Apparently. There's mm. somehow no ante or other chips <laughs> in the pot. No, <laughs> So he bet huge into nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sensible. also, the dealer is shuffling Why at this be? moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the dealer is shuffling <laughs> mid-hand. The cards overhand... Yeah. And face yeah. up. Face up. Face up as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. But a pair, but, but I think most importantly of all, when Simon sits down, he already has a hand. There's like, there's a hand it's waiting just... there for him when he arrives. <laughs> and I feel at this point, you ask for a redo. When you yeah. sit down <laughs> to a dealer shuffling face up to a, a hand that's already dealt for you while people have already put their beds down. I feel you ask for a redo. Yeah. Simon, don't worry about it. We called for you on the first two rounds. We actually, we called with zero chips because there was no betting, but now there's a huge bet. We're in the middle of the hand. But also second round, Simon, it turns out you bet like $3,000. So we just bear that in mind for what you're going to do. Yeah, maybe that was his bet. Maybe he mm. made the big mm. bet. Yeah, maybe he right? bought the pot of zero right there. Good job, Simon. You got three grand. So, but the movie, I guess, I thought for a second the movie realized how dumb that was and dealer guy with the sideburns is like, all right, everybody give me the cards back. We got a guy sitting down. But no, that makes it worse. Yeah. Now you just cancel the hand in the middle of betting to start over. You can't do that. Backseats, guys, backseats. We're all going to. Also, you can't deal out ghost hands in the middle of the hand. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. There are no non-random spots to break into this story. So about to play poker is going to do it for our interstitial cue. But we'll be back in a minute with even more of the Sons of Thunder episode four. Ah, it's like fire. Do you want better teeth or not? Yeah, yeah. I want better teeth. Hey, guys. I, I hate to say this again, but What's with the big bucket of brown liquid? Yeah, this right here. So I'm just teaching Eli to gargle some scotch, you know, for his teeth to help out. Yeah, it's for my teeth. Eli, 
If you want to take care of your oral health, why don't you just try the mouthwash from Quip? Wait, Quip makes a mouthwash? They sure do. Quip mouthwash kills bad breath germs, helps prevent cavities, and leaves you feeling fresh thanks to the formula that gives your mouth everything it needs and nothing it doesn't. Their four times concentrate has fluoride, xylitol, and CPC, but they left out all the artificial colors and stinging alcohol you'll find in a lot of other rinses. Oh, and uh, scotch. Wait, so no terrible burning? No terrible burning. The refillable dispenser's compact footprint will fit in any bathroom, big or small, and with five colors and two high-end finishes to choose from, you're guaranteed to find a dispenser that matches your style. This is the one mouthwash you definitely won't want to hide under the sink. Sitting on your counter, it's a beautiful reminder to rinse every day and a subtle way of letting everyone know that your oral care game is next level. Plus, Quip's refillable mouthwash is good for your mouth and the planet. With a four times concentrated formula, Quip ships less water and more good for you ingredients. Each eco-friendly refill replaces a big bulky 470 milliliter bottle from one of those other brands once diluted. And Quip's refill bottles are made from 100% recyclable plastic. So it's good for my planet and the mouth? I'm in. Where do I sign up? If you go to getquip.com slash awful5 right now, you can get $5 off a mouthwash starter kit. That's $5 off a mouthwash starter kit, which includes a refillable dispenser and a 90-dose supply of Quip's four times concentrated formula at getquip.com slash awful5. That's spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful5. Quip, the good habits company. All right, I'm in. What do you say, Heath? Mm, I think I'm going to stick with the scotch. Well, I mean, it's not for oral health reasons, is it? No, it's not. All right, guys, it's time to write the fourth episode now of uh, Sons of Thunder, episode four. Shit, I said that. You know what? One take, one take. So just to sum it up, so far, Simon is an ex-motorcycle gang member who just found Jesus, and now he's riding across the country trying to do things for people because of his mysterious backstory. Yes, the backstory, which has something to do with a child's lunchbox. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also a Christian lady he met in the biker bar who he went on a couple dates with. Yep, exactly. So, so far he has saved a girl from a cartel uh, only to turn her over to ice. Yeah, he he, he helped that dad stop being a jerk. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. lady make up with her poachers. Mm -hmm. well, uh, well, except for the one who tried to kill her. Right. So yeah. did he really turn someone over to ice? Yeah, no, yeah, he sure Very did. Literally. Um, yep. So, yeah. okay, so for this episode... I was thinking he's at a poker game to win back his motorcycle. Oh, I love those scenes in movies where, where it's like, call, all in, take two. Totally. Yeah, exactly. And then the bad guys will be like, double or nothing, go fish. Yes. Oh so my good. Sorry, 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 guys. But like, I'm loving the enthusiasm. But like, do any of us, any of us, any one of us know how to play poker? Well, I mean, yeah. You didn't just hear us say a bunch of poker stuff just, just now? Yeah, yeah, yeah but like, first I'm pretty sure the term go fish is just for, you know, go fish. No, no, it means grab a card. It's pretty, I'm pretty sure it's for all the games with cards. Yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely heard that in Ocean's Eleven, which was yeah. poker. Yeah. It was a poker thing. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you watched Ocean's Eleven? No, no, but I sat next to a guy on a plane who watched it once. Cool. That's all we need. Go fish was in it. Expert. And we're back for the breakdown. When we last left our hero, he was about to sit down for a game of glowy poker. But before we can get to that, we have to have another meaningless flashback lit. This time where Simon's meeting his girlfriend that he left the envelope party at the bar for. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be clear, he is right now staring into space, having a flashback during his poker game. Yep. That's what's <laughs> happening in reality. He's having a flashback. Oh, how good would it be if we had just cut back to the poker game and we just watched blood slowly leaking out of his ear? <laughs> right. I'm going to need you to not invite people I hit with a wrench to poker games. <laughs> yeah. just, just a little trickle from his left nostril and then he wipes the, the drool off his lower chin. And, there he and then he's like, sorry, where were we? I bet. Two drools. Sorry. <laughs> and look, it's been four episodes now, and each episode we've mentioned how much harder they're trying to stretch the 38 seconds of flashback footage they have to establish mm -hmm. the entire first season. But just to be clear, what happens in this scene is we're going to go on a date. Yep, I hope it doesn't get canceled. Shit, it got canceled. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole thing. That's the entire flashback. He meets the girl and the ch chick says, hey, I'm on call tonight, so let's hope I don't get a text. And then he gets a text and he's like, oh, I actually have well, to leave. Can you believe that? It's not that? even that. She says, let's pray nothing happens. Oh, that's right. right. And then he gets a text canceling the date. So 
they just disproved the power of prayer, right? They just disproved <laughs> they're God. Dead. Yeah. By the <laughs> way, he gets he gets a text from <laughs> Angel of Death yep. in his phone. Yeah. <laughs> and it says, get back to the clubhouse. And he's like, sorry, babe, it's uh, Angel of Death texted me right after we prayed to not have me texted by the Angel of Death. So <laughs> rain check. And she's like all sad. And we watch. This is Vanessa Angel is mm-hmm. the actor. And we watch Vanessa Angel at the end of this flashback just see her face be like, ah, oh, beaver damned again by the angel of death. This always <laughs> happens. It's so good. Yeah. I, also, I, I love the fact that he saved the name of his meth gang as the name of the meth gang. Right. In yeah. his like, oh, I've just got a text from the mafia asking me to come and meet them by the harbor. I can't imagine what this and is. And also, to do with. are they calling him from the company line? I mean, wouldn't it just be one of these guys that was him texting him? Yeah. Yeah. And if you go to the other side of that phone call, it's like, right, try and call Simon. No, sorry, you got to press nine for an outside line because otherwise it's just going to the part of the angel of death internal line. It's actually the assistant there. It's like, I've got Mr. Murray for you on line one <laughs> this did bring up a question though like do biker gangs have time off I just want to know how they work out like their shift rotation alright guys let's go over the plan for the week Dozer uh, you're going to be making the drop off to the cartel on Tuesday you got it boss and Jose you're going to be running guns up north the, the meeting is Wednesday but if you can uh, ooh Ah. What? I'm sorry, what's ooh, ah? Yeah, ah, yeah, it's just, um, I'd actually asked for Wednesday off, so. Okay, yeah, but. I asked for that off. Well, you you put it on the calendar, but was it approved? Um, I don't know. How do I know that? Well, you, you log in and you see if the data's blacked out. Oh, yeah, you, you can sign up for text alerts. Yeah, I signed up for text alerts. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, okay. Well, I need Wednesday off, so. Can you cover me? Stabby Joe, can you cover me? No, Maybe? No, actually, Stabby Joe is doing corporate training on Wednesday already. Uh, seriously? We did those like two months ago. No, it, well, just yeah, happened. it's they're quarterly. Ah, uh, damn it. Fine. Fine. I was going to math on Wednesday, but uh, I guess I'll just miss it. So enjoy your corporate training, Stabby Joe, I guess. I'm, I'm going to do trust falls. Great. Exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah but no he gets called into his biker gang so he drives off all loud and assholely because it's a Harley <laughs> and that's the end of the flashback again we spent a little bit of time on it but in reality that plays out in about 20 seconds mm-hmm. I, I cannot explain to the listeners how often my my notes end with and that's the end of that flashback <laughs> <laughs> every, single, every one of them because none of them end with anything consequential it's like nope. oh this happened oh and and and, and that was that, I guess. Okay. And we're back to where we were. They have no concept of the cliffhanger, right? <laughs> so, okay. So we, we come back out of the flashback. We're back at the poker game and we have to watch. I, I have the character as Wrenchy because he knocked him out with a wrench earlier. Smart, like mm-hmm. it. Yes. His name's Tate. Yeah. Tate. Tate. Yeah. yeah. Tate, the nephew. So Wrenchy is. <laughs> yeah. Call him Wrenchy. He's fucking with the bartender. Wrenchy. We're going to really lean into this whole thing that he keeps giving her poker chips that makes no goddamn sense and flirting with her throughout the game. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is the part where he cheats. Right. So Mm. Uh, he puts in the, mm. the rate. Okay. So (laughs) this is so fucking stupid. Yeah. This is where we're going to really start to dig into how the hell much does each one of these chips represent. Right. (laughs) So he puts in one chip, right? One single chip. One single, one single chip. Deeply important. A single chip. <laughs> and they say, I couldn't tell if that was a four or a six. So what? Which <laughs> implies they're denominating their chips where one of them is a four and one of them is a six. <laughs> which I don't know how many different colored chips you have, but that seems like a very inefficient way of denominating your chips. <laughs> sure is. Mm. We're using a binary system for mm-hmm. our chips. We have yeah. an no, on and an off have a, chip. Wouldn't have a six in that. Okay, so yeah. This no, is no, only going to get worse. The this upside down, down worse. yellow ones are six. The regular up <laughs> ones are four. It's so dumb. This is only going to make the, the eyelid on my right eye twitch a little bit more as we carry on <laughs> yeah. through the yeah, rest yeah, of this right. episode. Oh, my God. Right, so Tate gets called out because he put in a chip and he owed six to the pot, apparently. And they're like, that's well, just four. And he's like, no, 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 I put in six. And they're like, well, it looks like four. 
And yeah, literally, I mean, just look at the tiny there's the literally chips in the pot. This yeah, might represent there's four. There's, there's four chips total. One of them is a six or a four. <laughs> I paused it. There are five chips in the pot. There are five. There are five. <laughs> the guy is, yeah. with fucking eyes. And we know, we know at least one of the chips is a four, and one of them may or may not be a six. That's, <laughs> right, that's yeah, exactly. what we know uh, <laughs> about this. But what an incredibly low stakes lie. Yeah, yeah right. Because right. you're lying to up your thing by two. But like, go for 10, <laughs> go for 20. But no, two. But, two. but here's mm-hmm. the thing we don't know what that's two of. That could be $2 million for all we know. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Why have chips that are four and six though? Also, <laughs> this is only going to get worse. Heath. Four million and six million would still be silly. That's a yeah, ridiculous right. denomination. As, set as system. most of the, literally most of the rest of my notes for the rest of this episode will dictate, this only gets worse. The, yeah. all the rest of my notes are about how bad this gets in terms of denomination. You do not understand how to denominate chips. Yeah, right. But what's wonderful is that this is what they think cheating at poker is, right? Mm. It's like a tiny child trying to invent cheating at poker. It's like, <laughs> what do you think, no, little four-year-old no, Jimmy? Four. It was a, it was a six. That was the six. It was yeah. so that yeah. one single chip you threw in was worth two somethings more than you said it was. That is the height <laughs> of cheating. Yeah. yeah. Just stole yourself a sweet tip for your next <laughs> water from the waitress. Yeah, And then, to make it even better, when the hand gets settled, he goes... To pair. And Simon, our main character, turns over his hand and we watch the actors go, whatever is better than to pair. <laughs> they, they don't show us his no, part. They, they were not confident enough to show us what hand that might be that beats two pair. Yeah, they, they, they not did not us. know. They did not know. But even, even worse than that, I think even worse than that, just before they reveal their hands, someone says, it was your call to the guy who just put chips in. It's like, mm, I mean, it, it wasn't. No, I don't think it would. He just put chips yeah, in. Yeah, Simon he did it. and Tate, Wrenchy, are the two people who hand. Simon's like, all right, fine. I'll pretend you put in six instead of four just now. I'm looking at it. There's five chips you obviously put in four. <laughs> I'm going to let it go. I'll call the six. And then he says, all right, it was your call. And no. It wasn't. No, you, no. you nope. just called. I watched you, called. you said <laughs> you called. That's what you just did. You literally just yes, did. Yes, that guy shows his cards mm. now, but you called. That, yeah. Mm, it's whatever. I called. You sure. That's right. Mm, mm-hmm, Real mm-hmm. simple. But <laughs> my favorite part of this is Wrenchy is devastated at this point. He goes on tilt because he lost the bet of six. <laughs> Right. Well, actually, four. Well, yeah, so he lost, exactly. mm, four. He lost two thirds of the bed of six, <laughs> and he needs a breather outside to get off a tilt to yeah. relax. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, well, and of course, this is so fucking stupid because, of course, like pretty much every show that's ever had poker, they don't know how poker works. So the big reveal is that Simon beat him with the old had better cards trick. So everybody like wanders off all mm. pissy. <laughs> yeah, and this is where so. The main bad guy so far, who I have down as sideburns, is Wrenchy's uncle. Yes. Right? Uncle Richard, yeah. Okay, Uncle Richard, yeah. So Uncle Richard is the main bad guy, and clearly this is his poker game, and he's trying to use it to get a hold of something sinister. Right? By clearly, <laughs> what you mean is you have inferred that after the fact. Yes. Well, yeah. That is not clear at any point going into not even any of this. Remotely <laughs> clear, no. Because bear in mind, this is the guy who Simon Dozer turned up saying, that guy stole my bike, and the main bad guy lent him a lot of money to be allowed into the poker game. <laughs> right. He says, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you this money back. First of all, this is, this is an insane thing that I, I don't know if I care about this more than you guys do, but Simon Dozer tries to pay the main bad guy back by throwing him a single chip yep. and saying, that's for the buy-in. Now, the buy-in would have been, I imagine, the amount, the entire amount of money it cost you to be involved in that game. So why would that be represented by a single chip? That is a waste of that denomination of chip because maximally <laughs> there could be five of all chips to represent the entire pot. That is a waste of denomination. It's the all-in so, chip, Mark. Yeah, right. All right, you're in for a hundred. Here's one chip. All right. <laughs> Can right. I uh, can I change that for something useful? I have to make change with it. You can't make change. From- All right. <laughs> we can't make change because no one's got enough chips on the table to make change. <laughs> right. So far, we have four, six, and all. Those are our denominations. <laughs> <laughs> and Gimel. <laughs> well, this is where he tries to like cash out his chips. He's like, okay, well then, 
can I just buy my bike back from you? And he's like, no, no, you have to stay and play in the poker game. And it's like, for what? In what possible? What is the goal then if he can't <laughs> buy back the bike? Right. Well, no, he, he tries to give back his buy-in in yeah. the chip so that he doesn't owe any more money for what he was given for free at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. And and I was like, okay, but you're you're up a bunch of money now. Just leave with all the money. Right. And you're like, <laughs> it's still your bike one way or the other. Yeah. Presumably you have the title somewhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, and then, okay. So during this break, we cut outside where the sheriff, who was like, I don't know. I don't see no title here. Like, completely dismissed us. Is now snooping around that bike to see if Wrenchy maybe actually did steal the bike. Right. And. Of fucking course he did. Like, do are we? We're, I, apparently, we're supposed to believe that this sheriff is genuinely surprised to learn that this was stolen. He does seem shocked. This is such a <laughs> weird character reversal. Okay, so when Simon first comes in and is like, "Hey, he stole my bike," what I got the show was going for was like, "Oh, I don't believe you. Get it? I'm a corrupt cop." But then he goes outside and he's like, "Wait a second, Wrenchy doesn't own a motorcycle," <laughs> and he's like, "Oh gosh, darn it!" So he is. The dumbest, most incompetent sheriff of all I, that's, time. Because I'm like, so wait, so is this how he handles all reports of criminal activity? Like somebody calls him and is like, yeah, they, you know, the, the Johnson boy was in my uh, store stealing candy bars again. He's like, well, do you have a title for those candy bars? It's just your word against it. Like, is that just standard fucking response? Do you have a murder deed? What? <laughs> <laughs> Can you prove he was alive before the stabbing? Yeah. Do you have a right. deed to the dead person? <laughs> I don't understand this town. So, but yeah, and and of course, what the sheriff finds is like a jacket that's big enough to fit six of Wrenchy in it. You know, like mm. Wrenchy could have used it as a sleeping bag, perhaps. Oh, I I really wanted Wrenchy to come out and be like, "Oh, you found my jacket," and he's just in this fucking <laughs> circus tent. <laughs> yep, here it is. I love it. I love how it goes around my ankles. It that's drags my behind me like I'm getting. I feel like a bride in it. Is what it is. <laughs> but like yeah. instead, the sheriff just says to our character Simon Dorza. Well, you know, Mr. Clinton, the bad guy, you know, Mr. Mm -hmm. Clinton is the only reason this town is still breathing. And to be honest, I didn't know the bad guy was called Mr. Clinton. I assumed they were talking about the economic gains made under Bill Clinton's neoliberal policies <laughs> and how that, their effect on rural America. I was like, yeah, Mr. Clinton really did do well for the Rust Belt, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but also... They talk about Mr. Clinton, the bad guy here, about how, oh, you know, he, he funds the school. He, he did the, the thing for the, the, the food bank. He funds yeah. the police. He sounds like the good guy. He sounds right. like the only guy keeping this town afloat. And we will, ne he will never do anything that would suggest otherwise except twirl his mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, and be named Clinton. That is a pretty good name for a Christian movie bad guy. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta give him that. What, what I love though is, yeah, the, the cop is telling Simon, he's like, Hey man, you can't go against Mr. Clinton. He does everything in this town. And Simon's like, so he even funds the police department. And the sheriff's like, when times are rough. Yeah. Like, how does that, what does he? Just litter extra right in front of you. Like, ooh, I just dropped. I guess I'm going to need another ticket. Like, how does that happen? I, I think oh. he does that, but he does it very smart where he drops like $100 as litter. And that way they pick up $100 oh, and there you they go. get the fine yeah. as well. So it's, it's doubling up. Double. Right. No, exactly. That yeah. makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. Smart, smart. Mm -hmm. Also, <laughs> this is where Simon asks a question that like fucks up the plot of the movie by accident. They put it in there. He's like, okay, well then. So his uncle's like super rich and runs the town. He's also apparently very magnanimous and he like takes care of the public resources. Why would Tate, his nephew, steal my bike if the uncle has all that money? The family's rich. Fair. And the sheriff's like, I don't know, man, for for the plot, don't be a dick. Why would, why would he want to ask him that? And then I, I almost had dramatic sip as my best worst. Oh, this is yes. where Simon is like, all right, bartender, let me get a... Half glass of water, neat, please. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes a dramatic sip of mm. water, neat. <laughs> well, there's a there's a moment where you actually watch the actor realize, oh fuck, it's water. I can't do a dramatic sip of of water. <laughs> fuck, fuck. But also, this is where we established that the sheriff is Christian, just not you know Simon levels. Of Apropos Christian. of nothing, there is a pause, and then he goes. I'm a Christian, too. Also, you said that at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. 
but but of course, in Christian television show language, what we're saying here is that the sheriff is might be doing some bad stuff now, but it's really eaten away at him because he's so Christian. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because those are the ones that have, you know, a conscious of, of some sort. I like that they have another little accidental line here. The sheriff admits he's like, yeah, no, of course I'm Christian, but uh, it doesn't really help at all. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally a black sheriff in Texas. <laughs> so like, I, don't know, I don't know what to fucking tell you. Yeah, it, it's as if all of this has really no tangible benefit to actual society or the way any of us live our lives. It's just <laughs> right. not yeah. helpful to anybody. I'm yeah. literally a punchline from Blazing Saddles. So like, I don't know. <laughs> But then their nine-second poker break is over. You know how you take a yeah. nine-second poker mm-hmm. break in between hands? Yeah, so everybody can check and see who stole whose bikes. But then... In between their, like, <laughs> three hands. We've seen right. nothing yeah, exactly. happening so far. Exactly. But then... Oh, God, it's so wonderful. Simon fumble shuffles these cars. And it was, oh. I have to imagine for Eli, as the worst basketball sequence we've ever <laughs> seen was for Heath, or as the worst poker we've ever seen was for Heath, and Marsh, apparently. <laughs> like, so he goes to shuffle these cars. He splits the deck in half. It takes him like nine moves to organize the oh, two piles with those giant They're flying hand everywhere. Lines. Do I make ten piles, one for each finger? No. <laughs> no. Is it the, ri- the riffle shuffle where he very clearly bends each of these cards into a perfect hemi uh, yeah. <laughs> He folds oh. them. He folds two halves of the deck in half. Oh. He, ju- he, he is a giant. So the, the, the deck just bursts into flames at this point. <laughs> and they're like, all right. I have seen children make Barbie's kiss better and with more subtlety <laughs> than Simon shuffles these cards. Oh, Jesus, it was wonderful. And then and then we fucking heat stroke our way back into the flashback, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so now if you recall, the last time we were at the flashback, he got the emergency text from the biker gang to come back to the fucking biker hideout, which is the bar that he was at earlier. So he walks into the bar and he has to duck behind a table because Diego is throwing bottles at all of the other members of the gang. So stupid. And, and he's doing it, by the way, with the rhythm of a bad guy and a platformer, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Diego has somehow stumbled upon an infinite supply of glass yes. <laughs> And he's holding everyone hostage yes. from the corner of the bar with his so infinite weird. supply of perfectly timed <laughs> bottles from a platformer. Yeah. What is his end game? <laughs> There's no end game. It's infinite. I assume it's that they all die of starvation. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Infinite supply. Yeah. <laughs> so he actually, people, we didn't get into his backstory, but Diego is a hammer brother. So oh, it's, it's, it's a whole tradition exactly. for him. So the motivation is he doesn't want him to get from left to right. I understand <laughs> now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, this vision of what a bar fight is <laughs> by the movie is fucking amazing. Because... We get a bunch of that for a while. They've got a table propped up as a mm-hmm. shield yep, because yeah. of the infinite supply of bottles <laughs> and they're all hiding behind it. Finally, Simon's like, all right, I'll deal with this. And he, quote, runs over yeah. to Diego <laughs> just so fucking slowly. And as soon as Diego sees this giant has popped out from behind the table, Diego's he does that thing that like, <laughs> remember when you're a kid? One kid would like actually escalate it and the other kid be scared. So it was like, I'll stop if you stop. I'll stop if you yeah, stop. I'll right. stop. Stop. We both stop. We both time out. We both time out. Too hard. He does that. Simon doesn't give a fuck. He just comes up to him. Slow motion. Big face slap. Oh, yeah. End of fight. Oh, it's it's a great slap punch as well, because you expect this to be like choreography. He's throwing bottles. He's being kind of all rowdy. And Simon just like slowly saunters up and goes, kaboom one slap punch across the face and he's down and he picks him up and like carries him back with a sort of a oh, what are you gonna do well yeah um, i've got him <laughs> right. on my shoulder now i like i literally i almost used best worst fight choreography but i then i remembered david a.r white punch two right. three fouring yeah. his way through <laughs> movies and shit so no no so, okay, so meanwhile, back at the poker game, fucking Simon wipes the drool from his chin yet again, I guess. Right. And this is where Simon once again catches Wrenchy trying to short the pot. This time... No, but no, he doesn't. That's not what actually happens. This time, into nothing. So, Wrenchy bets five. Mm-hmm. Uncle mm-hmm. Richard is sitting behind him. Uncle Richard... for this, this was bullshit, too. Uncle Richard is like, see your five. He puts a five chip in. 
and raised five. And no, nope. you can't do that. Nope. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. That's a string mm-hmm. bet. You can't do that. Yep. You have to say raise right away. You have to put you the raised chips in. You all can't the same time. put in the and then see what everybody does. Yeah, right. No. You can't, you can't, you can't yeah. put yeah. in your call chip, look around and be like, yeah, you know them. what? No. You know, now that you <laughs> no. know, think about and, it. And raise, raise another three beyond that, actually. No, <laughs> don't, don't none think, of that. Think of it. You can't do any of these things. Mm-hmm. But so, okay, it, the bet is 10 if we allow that to happen. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So Simon calls 10. Yes. And then it's back to Tate. There are the three people in the hand. Frenchy, yeah. So Tate mm-hmm. calls five. And somebody's like, you actually owe five more. And l- no, you absolutely do not. Simon did, <laughs> yeah. Just count the chips. He started the five. <clears throat> Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. It is absolutely not the case that he owes any more money to this point. But also, I'll just point out, that means because they put a single chip in and say raise you five, they also have a denomination of five. So the denominations we know about so far are four, five, <laughs> right. six, and everything. Four, five, yeah, all the denominations yep. we know so An far. And infinity are the chips. <laughs> yeah. But that's incredible. We haven't even described the dumbest thing in this hand. No. So that bet goes around. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Tate correctly calls the raise... By Uncle Richard, so did Simon. Yep. So it's like, mm-hmm. they're all in for 10. And then Uncle Richard is like, all right, everybody called my raise. I get to bet again now in this round. <laughs> it's my turn again. But he doesn't even do that. He checks his he own checks. called yes. raise in the same He's round. He's not allowed to bet again. No. That's not how that works. And then he checks anyway. Nobody it's is. It's nonsense. This is like me trying to do nine bonus actions in D&D. And he's just like, <laughs> I go. Okay, if, okay, we're getting into a lot of poker stuff. If you're not a poker, this is like if a baseball team was like, all right, end of the ninth inning and I lost by two runs. We play piano now. I am playing <laughs> piano. Like, they're just making sure, they're just naming what they think are poker words. He might as well deal himself two extra cards and be like, call. Oh. Well, okay, but so here's the fucked up thing. After he checks this non bet, Simon raises it. What are right? you doing? I don't know, but he's now, but he's now raised beyond Wrenchy's remaining money, right? So Wrenchy can't afford to match this race. Now, there's a there's a way this is dealt with in a game of poker that's already long established with a side pot and everything, but not in this universe. No, mm-hmm. <laughs> of fucking course not. He's like, hey, hey, Uncle Richard, can you spot me some extra money? No, absolutely. You cannot. No, during a hand, add weird money to the table. You can't. Do, they do this in every poker episode of a TV show, sitcoms. They all do this. People end up, they're just like, all right, and um, I'm just going to call up my mortgage broker. Now I have a house on the tape that you can't <laughs> have stuff. Yeah, it's almost if you can't just bring into this point the deeds of a farm, I'll say <laughs> a fucking Harley <laughs> Davidson. This whole plot is ludicrous. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so okay, so he's like, can, can you spot me some money, Uncle? And Uncle Sideburns is like, no, Reggie, I can't do that. So Reggie's like, all right, well, I'll put the keys to this motorcycle on the table. Okay, mm. just to be clear, the bet was 10 call, you know, it got up to 10 mm-hmm. each. Ten Simon, things. after the raise call check raise bet, Simon bet 60 here. So <laughs> the bike is worth $50, according to this <laughs> Right, yeah, clearly. Right. Yeah, the, the bike or is worth 50,000. 50, yeah, it's worth 50 somethings. <laughs> yeah. And whatever unit we're talking about here has to apply universally as to everything that is possible to put on the table. As we'll see later, that includes real estate, which is worth yep. about 50 <laughs> somethings. Yep. So this Harley Davidson is worth whatever Jesse's farm is worth. And yeah, I don't know right. if that's an insult to the farm or a compliment to the Harley Davidson. It's not clear. No. Yeah, right. Exactly. Apparently the farm was in debt. So it's <laughs> negative value. It's negative. Also, the, the prices of these commodities are very volatile and the denominations will change <laughs> drastically in a few minutes. Do you think that's what it's like? It's like Bitcoin. Like these these yeah. chips are shifting constantly. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> like there the you one go. chip okay. is Dogecoin. Elon Musk <laughs> tweeted about a Harley Davidson and it was like, that's worth 80 grand now. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. But so, so apparently having given up on the, but I just own it still though aspect of the motorcycle debate simon's like yeah no okay that's fair but he loses the hand so so jesse wins the bike and and Mm. simon is like okay well then i will buy the bike from you for all of these chips that i paid nothing for yeah and we're back to square one right well and honestly bad guy at this point might as well be like no you can't because because then the 
episode so, would be over. Like almost 15 minutes that we still need to cover, man. You've got at so. least two or three more flashbacks to do before we can get to that <laughs> yeah. one. You can exactly. just give him the motorcycle fucking the next day, later. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. There's no conflict it's here. It's fine. <laughs> so, or he could just like call whoever's got the title and be like, hey, can you fax this over to the police department? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Merrick so. Von Hogg, I'm having this weird fucking night. <laughs> yeah. But that's the the ruling is like, no, you can't use chips as money in this poker game. Mm. You have to keep playing. These tokens are non fungible. It's a poker kumite. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm pretty sure that Simon needs somebody to remind him that like he's the good guy and probably shouldn't take orders from the bad guy. So we're gonna pause for a minute, but first let me give Act Three the hard sell. Will the stakes of this poker game ever be explained? Will the fact that Reggie keeps giving the bartender chips ever matter? Will our hero have any effect on the outcome of this story whatsoever? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. Mm-mm. But keep listening anyway when we return for the and then the good guy just one conclusion of <laughs> Sons of Thunder, episode four. Spoilers. All right, stranger. Your bet. Call. Uh, two. I'll call you seven. I'm all in, plus a motorcycle. Oh, damn it, I fold. All right, check. What? You just called. No, you got to move your queen. Oh, right. Uh, wet badger for me? Uh, at the square root of nine. Okay, wait, I That's thought you three. folded, though. Well, I have my fingers crossed behind my back. Damn it. Okay, uh, call. Checkmate. Nah, you sunk my battleship. Here? No, lower, lower. Okay, so your lower back, not your it's upper back. the whole back. back, man. I told you, the whole back. Hey, guys. Guys, what's the matter? Oh, he's still feeling a little stiff from the plane. Yeah, four flights in 24 hours. It's rough. Oof. Well, he, if you're dealing with back pain, why not try the Theragun? What's the Theragun? No, no, First it, point uh, back. Ah, how dare you? I'm injured. Ridiculous. Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power, and it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. Wow, that does sound good. It is. Plus, the OLED screen and design make you feel like you're holding something from the future. Just go to their site and check it out, and the Theragun app learns from your behaviors and suggests guided routines. Yeah, back when Theragun first became a sponsor, they sent us a few to try, and it is still my go-to when I've got muscle tension. Plus, it just feels amazing. It sure does. Try Theragun for 30 days starting at only $199. Go to therabody.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash awful. therabody.com slash awful. All right, Heath, looks like you'll be good as new in no time. You're going to use the Theragun on me? No, I just assume you were born in pain, so... Yeah, uh, that's fair. No. hmm And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action a little bit later in the poker ring. Mm. And, okay, so Reggie is still there with a big stack of chips in front of him. How does he have more chips? I don't... Because before... <laughs> he just went all in. <laughs> he went lost. all in. Almost all in. <laughs> so, well, did, maybe he had different keys in his other pocket and he cashed those in. I don't. I feel like in his other pocket, he had a continue that he cashed in. <laughs> in order to start again from the start with three extra lives. Right, right. Yeah. Just pan over to the bank of chips and, and the money and there's like nine motorcycles sitting inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's $450. I'm back in. Well, okay, so now here's the thing, though. Okay, so at some point, this show sort of, like, tried to introduce the fact that Jesse's family farm is on the line in this game somehow. I don't know if they're somehow all playing for it. Right, This isn't tournament style anyway, but I I don't know how it's... But but somehow we're supposed to believe that if Jesse wins this, he gets the deed to his family farm. (laughs) I don't know if anyone else would get the deed to the family farm if they won. That hasn't been made clear. <laughs> That's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Also, <laughs> it's telling that at no point during this recording has any of us mentioned one of the people who are playing who is the guy in charge of the bank for the entire town who's brought the deed to Jesse's farm. That's right. Because yeah. of uh-huh. how little he does in this other than produce an envelope once <laughs> to say, mm-hmm, there's yeah, no, your I farm have this deed. piece of paper. This piece of paper is the deed. Yeah, the tweed the jacket farm. guy, he's also there yep. now. We his, know. his job is just human envelope. He, he contains <laughs> right. a piece of paper once. <laughs> I wanted Simon to snatch it out of his hand, turn to the sheriff. I have the title to his farm. Yep, that's the law. He's got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yes, but Brenchy demands to know. He goes into this like impromptu evil guy speech demanding to know why Jesse wants that crappy old dirt farm anywho. Okay. Yeah. I have a theory, which is that Wrenchy had a monologue and the good guy, farm guy, his head was blocking his cue card because it, <laughs> he starts in normal bad guy monologue, but then he, and this is the quote, this is the dictation I took down, why don't you take the money and go to the, do the, go to the <laughs> place. Are you okay? <laughs> All right, so at one point in this monologue, he says, and this is confirmed by the closed captioning, he's going like, why don't you just take the winnings you've got now and move to the city? Quote, Find yourself some local country's daughter. Mm. End quote. Yep. Mm -hmm. What? Yep. <laughs> he also says, start going to one of those mega churches. Luckily, the closed captioning informed me that that's what he said. That is not what I me heard either. the first time. I, I heard the same but thing you heard. It was said <laughs> with all of the scorn that I'd say those words with, but for <laughs> right. exactly the opposite reason. Yeah, why don't you go to one of those mega churches? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Also, the idea that he can take all of his winnings from this from this poker what? game and move to the city to buy a fancy house. They're playing for, at most, $100. Where do they live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's going to be a Bitcoin situation. There's going to be a spike. Yeah, there's just, yeah. something, <laughs> something's about to happen to change the stakes. They're all playing with NFTs of yeah, this episode. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is where we learn, I think, what the show thought was a twist a yes. plot twist yes uh-huh so yeah tate's given his evil speech and he's like fuck you you're gross and poor we're tearing down the teen center uh, good luck with moving <laughs> to the mega church fancy house farm the country's daughter country daughter and then he said he the guy's head moves out of the way of his cue card and this is where he says something he was actually supposed to say i think it's part of the plot he's like good luck moving in with next to all the the fancy people driving past your stupid farm on the highway, and then Uncle Richard is like, Tate, shut the fuck up. You're messing up my evil... So you're, you're slowing down the game. The <laughs> speech. And the sheriff at this point is like, wait a minute. I feel like you started to say evil plan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you stopped. This sheriff is so thick. And this is the character I want to follow through the rest of the thing. He's just watching a guy get stabbed. I think there might be a murder afoot. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, because the stakes of this entire episode, the whole reason Simon Dozer is here, is that a road might get built. Somewhere. Yet another way that this movie mm -hmm. is like Roger what? Rabbit. Yes. So <laughs> what did they think that even meant? Like their knowledge of poker is so much better than whatever the fuck they were trying to say about real estate here. <laughs> and that is a low bar. So what I think we're trying, we're supposed to establish again, apparently this deed is on the line in the poker game and they're about to build a highway bypass that'll go right by that property and thus increase its value. Right. Cause you know how like, People driving by really loud and fast makes your property worth more money. I right. think is that better? <laughs> well, yeah, because you could because like, the property could if it's zoned commercially. Yeah, I, I only assumed that it was that you own that property and then the real estate, the people who are trying to build the road will have to buy that off you at a much higher price in order to build the road. That that could be it as well. Yeah, that could have mm. been what they were going for. But yeah, or like Google or Amazon is setting up their new big Silicon Valley headquarters in Fuckstick, Texas, or wherever they are. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. But this is where the sheriff starts to realize, like, wait a minute, this whole, you know, all of this mustache twirling and evil poker games. Are you a bad guy? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was an ordinary small town sheriff just accompanying an illegal poker game, which is opened by a robbery of a stranger who is then invited <laughs> to that game. But if something off is going on here, yeah. I'm going to put a stop to it. Right. Then. <laughs> right. <laughs> and this is where the, the sheriff decides he wants to start cutting the deck from now on because he's on well that's how we represent that he's getting suspicious <laughs> yeah. yeah but the way he says he's getting suspicious is i never got offered my cut right but that only to me thought he was annoyed he didn't get a cut of the land deal about yes. the road being built yes that's exactly what it sounded i think the movie was just like yeah it's both i don't know it's mm. fine 
yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna have that mean both. <laughs> but the cutting the deck part means they've been cheating this whole time, and Simon's still winning because Simon's <laughs> won a bunch of hands, right? And, and so, so has Jesse. Yes, exactly. And they really said, well, because most of their cheating is like trying to get two extra dollars out of the bet, <laughs> you know? Right. And cutting the deck so, doesn't really change. Yeah. That. <laughs> All right. Well, so, okay. So Simon flashes back and we open up this time as though something exciting is going to happen, right? We open up with Simon pulling up to a spot in the middle of nowhere with a sledgehammer and Diego tied up in his truck. Yeah. Oh, I really wanted him to kill Diego. <laughs> I really wanted this to be the scene where he just slams that hammer straight through Diego's skull. And that's what we're going with as our hero for the rest <laughs> of the We go them. Game of Thrones style. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, there's this amazing moment where he goes, I'm supposed to break your legs with this sledgehammer. And I wanted like a bunch of takes of him trying to hit Diego and Diego just keeps moving. Stop it. Come on, man. This is fucking... <laughs> All right, I'll hold you with one foot. No, no, he's just wiggling. Stop wiggling. If I break your hip, it doesn't count. But it's mad because he says, I've decided not to break your legs, but I want you to act like I did. Okay. So yeah. what, Diego's got to pretend his leg is broken. <laughs> How is that going to work from here on in? <laughs> just walking around with Bugs Bunny casts around hey, town. Is there any way that I can just get a cast from you? No, I know that normally you reserve those. It's a it's a weird story. But yeah, he's like, I'm not going to break your leg. And he's like, why not? He's like, Jesus or some shit, right? We, we, he's too Christian to break his leg now. But, but again, like... His Christianity turns on and off at the moment. He's like, oh, sure, I'll punch you out and lock you in a car and drive you out into the middle of nowhere. <laughs> My Jesus hits at the leg breaking. Yeah. Yeah, clearly. Right. Also, just to be clear, Jesus is letting a meth gang exist, but stopping one leg breaking. Yeah. That's Jesus' intervention. <laughs> right, exactly. Here. Of a member of the meth gang. Do you think his Jesus kicks in a bit like uh, Back to the Future when you go over a certain speed? Like he goes past oh, yeah, okay. eight miles yeah. an hour and right. his Jesus kicks in. <laughs> there we go. That makes <laughs> one point twenty one Jesus watts. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. So then we cut back to the poker game, which is getting more intense i guess mm. <laughs> and this is where all everything that we thought we knew about these denominations is thrown right out the fucking window because i paused and checked at this point banker dude sets down 18 chips in a stack i counted and he says i'll see your 15 <laughs> so those yep. yellow chips are 0.833 of <laughs> right. yes thank you they, they, that was a $90 stack earlier in the game. We saw it. That was 18 $5 chips. And now he's like, 15. So, 100 what? million? What, what has the happened? The denominations are 0. 0.83, 4, 5, 6, and 10. This is such an inefficient yeah. way to play poker. <laughs> well, also, but then, then he raises 10 with a stack of 11 of the same colored God. chips. Damn it. Okay. Well, he has the yeah. negative chips from the guy oh, earlier. Right. So that, oh, maybe he was the there. negative chips. <laughs> but yeah, Jesse bets the 15, which is nonsense, but whatever. Okay, $15 million is on the table, whatever. And then Tweed guy, he's in the hand. He goes, I'll see your 15 and raise 10. And but, no, you won't. Yeah, no, you won't. The minimum raise would be 15 more there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever. Yeah. Even if that's not a rule, they just went with... A super not at all dramatic race. Why, yeah, in their exactly. dramatic Why not? Show. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you at 15 and I'll raise you another one. Right. <laughs> and I'll raise you a water. Sorry, was, that, was that undercutting tip. the tension of 16. the moment? I do apologize. <laughs> It's just, and one hug coupon yeah, since we're doing that? random stuff out of our pockets <laughs> into the table. Also, at this point, after the banker has put down that particular bet, the big bad guy sideburns he himself starts to put bets in himself. So, but, but you, you were didn't, in the last time we bet, you, so why are you back right. in now? We're I'm in back in hand. now. We play piano, and I call that <laughs> from out. before that I folded. <laughs> I'm in out. now. But, so, but apparently what we've established here is there's a very large pot at stake here. Jesse has thrown the bike in now, right? The bike is The stolen bike is back in the pot. Yes, so Jesse puts in 17 plus the bike keys, which the banker matches with 20, which means at this point, the bike is worth three, three. something. Now, this might be $3, it might be $30, it might be $300, but if one is $100, then 
That means Wrench Guy has been tipping the waitress a thousand dollars every time she brings him a drink. <laughs> but they call eventually somebody calls this or something, and like officially, apparently for realsies though. But before they can start turning over cards, Sideburns, Uncle Richard notices that the bartender isn't wearing that diamond ring she was wearing the other day. <gasps> mm. You can't just add rings to the pot. You can't. <laughs> there's, no, there's no mechanic in poker for you to be like, plus my ring. No. No. You can't add rings to the plot, and you can't add plot with a ring. It's mm. just like, and by the way, do I notice some other plot in this? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Quick in the middle of this I'm plot. short on plot. Can you back me up with some plot, too? <laughs> Yeah, and so Reggie, who I guess gave her that ring or whatever, gets all pissed off. He jumps up, he grabs her by the arm, and Jesse, the guy who's playing for the deed to the family farm or whatever, jumps up and punches the fuck out of Reggie. He beats the fuck out of him out of nowhere. And the thing is, this Reggie nephew taste thief guy only looks like he's like, what are you doing to the waitress? Stands up, look confrontational. So then Jesse just springs on him. And like, if someone thinks you look like you might be uh, about to assault someone and then you preemptively pounce on them and start to beat the fuck out of them, <laughs> you're the one in the wrong for beating the fuck yes. out of them, not the person you think might have been doing something wrong. For so long. Like, we cannot convey how long Tate sits on top of Reggie and punches him. Yeah. I The only assumption I can make is that the sheriff who is about to pull Tate off of him, was it crafty and was like, can you get a bean and cheese burrito? And they just <laughs> left the camera rolling while Tate crushes his head like the fucking mountain in Game of Thrones. Well, and also it doesn't help that they've used the sound effect for like, you know, that you would use if he was hitting him with a large bag of bricks. Right. <laughs> over and over. And then the sheriff breaks it up and arrests Wrenchy. He arrests mm -hmm. Wrenchy. Because he's like, yeah. he did look like he was he did look like he was gonna hit that girl though. I I'll look the other way at a little grand theft auto, but come on, <laughs> looking angrily at a woman, that's a little much in my book. <laughs> yeah, when when you stood up you had a real mean expression on your face. I mean yes. before that expression was beating the fuck off your face by the guy who pounded <laughs> you into the dirt. <laughs> And then fucking Simon is like, okay, I've had so little to do with the plot of this episode. Can I go now since one of the players is under arrest? And the sheriff is like, oh, no, we are going to resolve this with poker. I am the sheriff. This is the law. Mm -hmm. Well, right, because he says I, apparently getting arrested for Reggie is just like losing all his chips is in poker because he gets arrested. But then he's still playing poker with them. Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 But this is also where we reveal this is, I believe, Eli's best worst twist that the bartender has secretly been Jesse's fiance this whole time. <laughs> that matters For in 50 no years. Way. <laughs> Does not does, don't stop saying it like that. Nothing. Not That's even nothing. the actors in the scene can bother to pretend that that matters. <laughs> like, why would this? And I want to just point out, okay, so I was because I forgot how to properly underestimate the writers for Sons of Thunder. I assume the way we were going to go with this whole story is that he loses all his money and he's lost the family farm. Jesse, that is. And then the bartender girl sits down and is his, his secretly his wife or his sister or whatever. And with the like 18 bucks that she's gotten tipped from Wrenchy this whole time, mm. proceeds to use her world champion poker skills to win it all back. I thought that's where we were oh, yeah, going with nice. the... That's a good plot. It would be dumb in 11 fucking ways, because why would he be giving her the chips? Her? But, but since we were there anyway, I assumed that's what they were doing. They were too lazy to even get there. And she might have 18 infinity chips. Well, that's so true. Like, yeah, we don't know. Might, it's she'd be She'd be bullying the table at that point. Well, she puts down on the side 12 black chips, which are worth anything between like $24 and like $1,200 at this point. Right. Yeah, no, it's like buying and selling bells on Animal Crossing. Who the fuck exactly. even knows? <laughs> yeah, she sets them down in front of Jesse, the hands over, and she's like, plus he had these 12 chips. <laughs> yeah, like, it works. All All right. Right. Like, oh, I, I also bet whatever was in my pocket when he was betting. <laughs> You can't. You're not in the game, even though. <laughs> yeah. But then I guess at this point, now that those 12 infinity chips have been added to the pile. Why would you do that? He's Jesse should have just been like, well, no, I'm already all in. 
I get to see his cards. Now you're just adding money that I give if I lose. That's really <laughs> that's not an, helpful. Yeah, that's yeah. Help his, at all. His more stuff I could not have had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's something I can put into the side pot. Only I can win. Yeah, but that this is where Sideburns decides he wants. To, he wasn't really playing poker at all this whole time. I quit. We all quit. No more game. No more poker game. What Sideburns is saying is. I don't want to play poker with somebody who just pounced on my nephew and started to beat the fuck out of him. Mm -hmm. I am the bad guy. Yep, <laughs> exactly. And the sheriff is like, I'll be damned if I'll let you quit this poker game in the middle of this poker game in the bar you own. <laughs> no, I called interference, do over, hand doesn't mm -hmm. count. No, no, you've done that a couple times now. I'm not doing it <laughs> at the end of the show. We have to show the cards. But yeah, so, that, so it's time to turn over the cards. And it turns out that Jesse the underdog that was playing to win back the family farm had a straight flush. Fuck you. No, you don't. <laughs> okay, so this, this annoyed me yes. a lot. I but love I say your notes are like a dissertation on mm, this. 80% mm, mm. <laughs> of my notes are on this one point. So first of all, first of all, the bad guy thinks he's cheated and says, do you think I believe you magically came up with a hand? No, because... If he magically came up with a hand, that would have been cheating. So right. you don't have to believe he magically did that. that. That's not the way of explaining why this isn't cheating. But the thing is, because obviously when he shows this straight flush, Simon Dozer, the Christian, is like, Ma, you see, that's just how God works. He brings you a straight flush now and then. That's the kind of miracle that God does. But the thing is, a straight flush. The chance of a straight flush in like seven card Texas Hold'em is about three and a half thousand to one, which is not that uh, like it's not that common. It's very uncommon, but it's significantly lower by the time they call it, right? Because you There'd already be know, five fucking yeah, exactly. there's five cards in the middle, three <laughs> exactly. of which at least would have to be indicative of a of a straight flush. Yes. And once you've got that on the table, you know you're looking at the you know the the odds of him having two of the possible four cards that could finish that flush from the remaining cards that aren't on the table. There's five cards on the table, so you know two of them can't be that. You've got two cards in your hand, which also tell you that they can't be that. So at this point, you're looking at like maybe four cards in 45 remaining cards times three cards in the 44 that are remaining. So you're roughly speaking looking at the odds of about one in 165. And the Christian smugly claims that's a miracle from God. And this is exactly what's wrong with religious people. <laughs> yes. They don't even realize they're taking credit for basic maths. Basic <laughs> maths at this point. That one in 165 chance could not have happened without my all-powerful God intervening. <laughs> Yeah, they're saying God is in charge of random cards, but he just happens to make them work out exactly like you'd expect over the long yeah. term based on <laughs> yeah. that. Uh -huh. exactly. That's what's happening. Uh -huh. But just to prevent an email from the nerd, poker nerd that we're going to get, it, it would be me possibly, to prevent an email from me. <laughs> to myself. Yeah, the, the chances of that. Story. So yeah, it's there's 45 unknown cards, but half of those remain those four cards that could complete the straight flush they're, they're, it's actually not quite that. It's, it's not quite that simple. There's the, it could be in the middle of the flush. There could be once you get one on the outside edge of that, then it obviously did, it means you can't get the, the two to the start of that. It, it's still not more than one in three hundred, say. Yeah. Well, yeah. It depends. Yeah. So if there's like three connected cards, like seven, eight, nine of spades are out there, you could have either the ten jack or the yeah. five six or the six ten. Welcome to but our you, new but poker you analysis. Have, podcast. If you, pull yeah. the you couldn't first, have the, you, you couldn't, couldn't have the jack this. six yeah. or the ten five. Sure. Or the ten, so it's actually half that. It would be like one in three thirty if it was seven, eight, nine on the board or something connected like that. It'd be a little different if it was unconnected on the board. If you take yeah, out your we're, right we're talking headphones, less than you can the, hear the me and no one. <laughs> our favorite episode. Of we're talking less than the odds of rolling a natural twenty, tw natural twenty twice in D and D. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah, there's like nine hundred ninety total hands, forty five C two, and like three of them would win. So yeah, yeah one in three thirty yeah. if okay. it's connected. All right. Yeah. No. So with that, with all of those emails avoided, we'll move on. All those emails from Heath. Avoided. Can I write an email about not liking that part of our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> but OK, but here's the thing, though. So the moral of this story, then, is that when you're in tough times financially, if you're Christian enough, Go bet the family farm on a game of high stakes <laughs> poker. God will sort it out. 
mm-hmm. literally bet yep. the farm. That's yeah. the goddamn moral of the goddamn story. <laughs> also, bearing in mind that Simon Dawser is our like Christian interventionist character. All of this would have happened without him, and right. yet he still takes credit. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> like, Jesse would have turned up to that game, and he would have played anyway, and he would have won anyway, regardless of whether Simon was there or not. The only way he could be less involved in the miracle of this episode is if he was watching this episode of Sons of Thunder with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but literally, we had as much effect on the outcome of the plot as he did. Yeah, it's pretty yep. fucking weird. Also, just one other thing on this hand. Okay, the guy, Tweed guy. If you're talking tweed about more math, I'm going to taste you. Tweed, tweed guy announces, you. I have sevens over fours. So full mm-hmm. house. He's got seven trip sevens and a pair of fours. That's his hand. Jesse has the straight flush. But in order for that to be, they, they had this huge set of betting all before this, a big bunch of betting. The best possible starting hand for each of these people would be a pair of sevens for the Tweed guy and... 10 jack suited connectors for Jesse. And they're yeah. betting huge going into all this thing. Absolutely not. Nothing. None of this. So good that you cleared that up. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, so Heath, just, just to, I, mean, I feel it's important <laughs> we dig into this further. Oh God, are we doing what's the math the flop? again? What's, no, what's the three no, card flop no, in that case in no, order for him so, to get to this but, point? Yeah. Like, it, just, okay, why so do we in order for that save happen, there's me a, the trouble of just cutting this out flops. later? <laughs> Okay. So, uh-huh. so the guy, uh-huh. the guy with the pair of seven spikes trips. So okay. seven flaps. So that, so, you know, a pair, a pocket pair is a decent starting hand. You could go through. And once you spike your, your three literally of none of this is, is going to be on the, the show. show. Like, I was, I was already going to cut a lot of this math. <laughs> anyway. I was just adding. But more. 10 Jack guy so. for him to be in that whole time. It would have this to be like patron extra. It would have to be no, seven, gonna, have to be anyway. seven nine, yeah. ten, and suit connector guy has four out of a straight it flush is already. Ninety six degrees. <laughs> <laughs> so, <all right. laughs> Stupid poker doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Talked about your bullshit board game. Whatever, nobody fucking cares. <laughs> all right, so now I had my air conditioner running during that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but, and then, and then the Cypress is like, well, if God got involved, it doesn't count. You can't have your family farm back. And the sheriff punches the shit out of him. <laughs> just, <laughs> just the ever loving fuck out of him. The effort to redeem this sheriff by the end of it is in some kind of weird overdrive. They've like overhit the goal and now must swing back, I guess. <sighs> It's like the sheriff burst into the room where the writers were, punched one of them out, and started to write the second <laughs> word of the episode. But this this isn't good law enforcement because the guy he just punched, all he did, all he done was mislead people over a land deed. That's yep. the entire thing that we know he's done. So the sheriff punching him is just police violence, yes. unwarranted <laughs> level of police violence. Absolutely. I guess it was just to make the episode a little more American for you, Marsh. But <laughs> but apparently based on this hand, which had like 27 units in it total or something, based on that, the game is over now. Everyone <laughs> mm-hmm. wasn't all in, right? Because like it's, because Simon still has chips. <laughs> right? And so yeah. what, what were they? Were they all playing until a certain time or until one of them got punched unconscious? Like what was the... <laughs> I, no fucking idea. But Jesse has his deed back and the bank owes him a bunch of money, damn it. <laughs> the stakes in this game are incomprehensible. <laughs> the amount of money on this small pot in the table is enough to clear the debts on all of his land, give him the deeds, and the bank owes him a check. What are we playing with here? How much was he tipping the waitress here? It's all right. meaningless. <laughs> Jesus. And then, and then Simon... Says, like, I don't want my winnings. You can give them to Jesse. I just want my bike back. And I'm like, but why wouldn't you? You could, but you should take the winnings, though, anyway. Yeah. Like, God clearly <laughs> did that, too, right? In your mind. But no, he doesn't. You, you're going to have to eat while you're on the road, mate. Come on. Take, <laughs> yeah. take it. Take $20 at least to get yourself a taco on the way. <laughs> yeah. So Jesse gives him the keys. He's like, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I actually needed you for a super convoluted plot. I don't, <laughs> I have no idea what actually happened. <laughs> I needed you to observe a super convoluted yeah, plot. Right, right. I needed you to be a, a passive observer on this drama. <laughs> That's right. Well, and then Simon even says, he's like, well, I guess at least now I know why I was here. And I'm like, well, we, the audience, don't because you didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, can you help us out here, mate? Because we're watching him. You need yeah, to throw us a fucking you bone. Can, you go ahead and tell us, man. <laughs> 
And then, okay, and then we epilepsy our way back into the flashback one last time. The flashback oh. of that time that he didn't break that guy's legs. So we he walks into the bar and he asks his, uh, the, the bartender for a drink. <laughs> he says, Dixie, I need something stronger. And I wrote, then water? That's literally everything. All everything the things in- are stronger <laughs> than water. And she man. pours him a brimming shot, my friend. <laughs> Very yeah. generous. She yeah. pours him the shot that douchebags at Heath's TGI Fridays wanted him to pour for them. <laughs> yeah, an, an uncomfortably full shot of Jack. Like, surface tension only. You've got to lean yeah, into the bar yeah, and, like, yeah, slurp yeah. it off the top of the glass <laughs> level of Jack Daniels. Thank you, twisty straw. <laughs> <laughs> and then, just then, just as he's about to take his actual drink of alcohol... Diego bursts into the bar, yells, hey, and then we hear a gunshot. But before we can see the conclusion of that gunshot, that nine second flashback is over, guys. <laughs> yeah, really teasing us for Sons of Thunder episode five. Isn't it, though? Aren't we all very excited now to see how that worked out? But OK, so we get back out of the flashback. Apparently, they have pokered all night long. Yep. With all seven hands that they've played, they yeah. were yeah. long hands. They took a while <laughs> per one. Well, if, to be you fair, have evil speeches in between hands about teen centers. I get it. Also, e- each down. of the players all had also had to go back to the list of which hand beats which hand to sort of go hang, pass me the list again a second while I just have a quick look. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Your well, turn and then you. To be fair, like they had this weird system where everybody just gets to keep betting whenever the fuck they want, <laughs> <laughs> any amount. Yeah, it's- there's unlimited. I check again, and you guys have to figure <laughs> yeah. it out. There yeah, was also going. unlimited buy back in. And- oh, God, just just every round of betting just ends with everybody looking at each other, waiting to make sure nobody goes, raise one. Okay. Are we done? Are we done? Start breaking chips into pieces. <laughs> I raise a raise half. One. Oh, <laughs> half any. So, yeah, so they all walk out of the bar in the early morning. Jesse and the bartender girl are like, so should we take my car? And he's like, well, we could just walk around for a bit. And then they just walk off and like, why would you, you guys have been up all fucking, you have to smell terrible by now. Yeah, why I would guess you go home then. first? But we'll just wander to our farm that we own now. <laughs> yeah. Let's just walk out of scene, I guess. Yeah. So they leave and now it's just the sheriff and Simon, the main character still standing around. And the sheriff's like, what's in the bag? And Simon's like, it's my Bible. And he's like, oh, why do you have a Bible in a children's lunchbox? And he's like, one time a guy told me I sucked. And the sheriff's like, are you saying I suck? And then Simon's like, are you saying you suck? And that's the end of the yeah. fucking episode. <laughs> and then he rides off into the sunrise. That's how bass backwards this whole fucking thing is. They have it right <laughs> off into the sunrise at the end, you dumb fucks. All right. So that's the episode. And Marsh, I have to ask now. So you've seen episode four. Are you going to binge the rest of this series as soon as we wrap up this record? Uh, I'm going to wait for the movie. Um, I think <laughs> I'm going to try and binge them all going in because I, I don't want to spoil the pure flicks universe of uh, what's going to happen. Yeah, sure. I, I, I'm, I'm watching how the characters all develop over time. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. All right, dude. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I know it was only 35 minutes long, but there's nothing that we ever ask you to watch that's actually short, you know, at all. <laughs> it's on its own time dimension. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Sons of Thunder episode four. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to assure everybody that we haven't come to our senses yet. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we'll be watching God's Not Dead for We the People. I am so excited. All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring this episode to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for hanging out with us today. Be sure to check the show notes for links to all the cool shit that he does. Also, an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make this show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Idiot Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot. Nigga, we will drop some Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. 
in the 2019 World Series of Poker main event, God cheated on behalf of Muslim poker professional Hossein Ensan, <laughs> helping him win $10 million. Huh. God is Muslim. That's all you. The sheriff realized later that selective good guy is a different way of saying bad guy and arrested himself. <laughs> that new bypass road eventually got built and destroyed the town's only successful business model, stealing motorbikes from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to purchase Marsh and Heath's audiobook, Poker Math for Bored People, you can do so on audible.com or wherever audiobooks are available. <laughs> do I need to be American in this one? Yes. yes. Okay, people I'll, love I'm it. Gonna, I'll, I mean, it. I'll try, but it's it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> the people cry out for it, Marsh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> don't you don't you be reasonable, noise me. <laughs> and how, how do you, what do you say to people who say that they shouldn't be crying out? <laughs> <laughs> Hollow Earth filled with Hitlers. <laughs> what would you just say to people who doubted you, who didn't think that people, the people Have really were crying rope, out? Please. Like, and how do you feel about Socratic dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say PCP. I really was. <laughs> Let's get some fucking mouthwash. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny that somebody's paying me to be their spokesman on oral health. <laughs> that's some funny shit. Hey, they, they pay me to do the workout apps. Yep, that's true. <laughs> And they Stop pay Heath to do better help. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do what you did. Sorry. Do. I shouldn't have laughed that much. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.